this session is about uh, the business of sport. And we've got two guys, two, two gentlemen here with us who are uniquely positioned to talk to us about it. Uh, first of all, Nick Van Exel. Uh, Nick Van Exel, uh, uh, I, I think almost everyone knows who he is, is an all-star athlete at the elite levels, including with the Los Angeles Lakers. He then took part in senior levels of management and coaching with the Atlanta Hawks and other organizations. Uh, so thank you for joining us, Nick. And a big round of applause for Nick. We also have, have Walt Pitchford, Walt, Walter Pitchford, Walt. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Walt was also an elite professional athlete who then took an interesting journey uh, to become an investor. So maybe I can become an investor, from an investor, I can become an elite <laughs> athlete at some point, but Walt uh, was an elite athlete, including with in the Toronto uh, 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 ba National Basketball Association, and he's gonna talk to us about investing in sport. So without further ado, let's uh, uh, start with you, Nick. Uh, when we look around in the world of sport, it feels like there's so much happening, right? There's so much happening, so many trends, so much change. So we won't try to cover the full landscape, but if you could pick two trends, two trends that you think about a lot and share a little bit of that with us on what perhaps we should also think about. Uh, first of all, thank you uh, for having me here. First time over here, very nice place, love it. Uh, two things that I see trending right now. One is the contracts. You know, players are making a lot of money nowadays. And with that being said, there's a lot of room for, for managing a lot of contracts, helping players not only, you know, keep their money, but growing their money. Uh, you know, when I first came into the NBA, my first year I made <laughs> $150,000. And uh, now, you know, that's, that's peanuts. And the scary part about it is that they're making so much money now, they're so young, and it's tough for them to manage it. They have a lot of hands coming at them. And, you know, with us, myself, Walter, uh, partner with Spark Labs, a great group. You know, we can help bridge the gap to help these guys not only keep their funds, but raise, raise more for them. So I think that's one big trend is the contracts. The second big trend I see is in uh, college athletics, which is, uh, they call it the NIL, which is name, uh, likeliness, image. In, name, image, and likeliness. And what that, what that is is now as in a uh, college athlete, you're able to get funded. You're able to, to make money. And that's, that's also very scary, but it's also good at the same time. And I look at the scary part more than I do the good part because when you're 17, 18, 19 years old and somebody gives you a million dollars, you have no idea what to do with it. I mean, zero idea what to do with it. And that's the scary part about it. So. You know, we can help these young kids, you know, manage their funds and, and help them grow their funds and, and teach them, you know, financial literacy. You know, that's a plus for us. You know, the, one of the things when we were discussing this panel, uh, Walt, you mentioned this a lot. The way you describe the trends in sports, as a tech investor, it feels like sports is becoming a tech business. What, 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 do, you, what do you have to say about that? Yeah, um, when it comes to the technology in sports, you, you see streaming services, you see um, augmented reality, virtual reality, and, you know, all the way down to data analytics. You know, data analytics, um, understanding how fans consume and experience events um, from the AR to VR where augment, augmented reality enhances your, your current reality. Um, so picture you being at home on your couch and you're able to view a basketball game the New York Knicks are playing and you can sit courtside. That's amazing. That technology, um, I think, is going to go a long way and I think that we're here to see a lot of um, emerging technologies blossom. So. 
You know, one, one thing, just still on you, Walt, one thing, every, almost every, every session I've been to the last day or so, uh, everyone has to mention AI. So this session would be remiss if we didn't mention AI in sports. What's one thing about AI in sports that we should watch for? AI in sports. Um, I would say from, let's see. Hmm, that's a tough one, actually. There's so many good AI technology companies that are coming out that can enhance sports and also pair it with data to where I think that it will grow the sport even more. If it so data and sports, right? Mm -hmm. So one thing, so everyone thinks that the amateur fan thinks there's a lot of data in sports, but you seem to think that sports has a data problem. Yeah, it's a huge data problem. And just understanding all the ways with the new technology and how the fan engagement consumes and experiences um, to where you know you can personalize experiences for the athletes and understand more about them the more technology that we build. And I think AI will play a large part of that. And um, obviously just figuring out where that data goes and how do we use that um, to make the sport better and grow the sport. So coming, coming back to you, Nick, uh, so, it's, so from what you're saying, there's a lot more money in sports in terms of player contracts. There's also a lot more sources of money. So where does 100X Sports come in? I think 100X Sports comes in as, as bridging a gap. <clears throat> you know, a lot of athletes, they're not able to sit at the table of a the same table as the owner of a team, say a Mark Cuban, you know, some of these wealthy owners, unless you're like a LeBron James or Steph Curry, you know, so, you know, Spark Labs and the collaboration is, you know, Spark Labs has helped start up over 500 companies. And if some of these kids that, you know, we're about to connect with, if they can just get one or two of them and they just take off and be the next YouTube or whatever it may be, next ring, whatever, you know, that, that's a plus. Uh, Spark Labs will be great for, for us. Uh, we will be great for Spark Labs because both together is just building that bridge and it's going to open up a lot of doors. And Samir, let me add to that. Yeah. So business acumen, you know, this is something that Nick and I speak about all the time and I uh, pick his brain about from his leadership, from you know the level that he played at, and picking Spark Labs' brain. Business acumen is so important that the global ecosystem that Spark Labs has built will help at the grassroots level, not just the professional sports level, and to teach from the top advisors and investors globally. Um, that's something sports need, and that's something that players need. 